Last week, we showed you this wreckage of the Ocean Gate Titan submarine after its disaster and implosion, and it was going down to see the Titanic. So we want to take a look at the parts that were brought up now, and we want to glean some answers out of them, like what do these parts tell us and what don't they tell us? We're also going to take a deeper dive into the manufacturing of this Titan sub to show you a couple of things that I have questions about here. And then we're also going to show you a real implosion so you can get an idea of what they must have gone through during this implosion. And then we're going to look at Mr. Beast, who almost died on this submarine, if the reports are correct. Now looking here at the titanium nose cone, this is the entry with the portal window. We noticed here since the strap is through the window, okay, what happened to it? What happened to our acrylic 21 inch window? Where did it go? Now because this acrylic window was only rated at 1300 meters, many people think that this might be the cause. But check this out, if it really imploded, what happened to the flange that's holding it in place? So if there's no damage on that dome anywhere and it's not stripped, then what happened to it? Could it be that the salvage crews that brought this Titan submarine up had to take all of the little bolts off of there and take that acrylic window out in order to fit that belt through there so that they could hoist it up and off the boat and onto the truck? So there's a couple of possibilities. So either the salvage company has the porthole window in their possession right now with all the bolts and the flange and everything's okay, or maybe it was the cause of the implosion and it's in a million pieces at the bottom of the ocean, or Maybe it wasn't the cause of the implosion and it's in one piece at the bottom of the ocean. So there's your three scenarios here for this portal window on the Titan sub. Every time we get one question answered, three more pop up. Okay, so now here they are lifting up one of the titanium rings. I wanted to investigate here the manufacturing process because I have some questions about the way these things were manufactured and I wanted to show this to you. And you can let us know what you think too down in the comments. OceanGate made a video showing us how they mated these unharmed titanium rings onto the carbon fiber cylindrical compression chamber. And the carbon fiber. That seal needs to be uniform and small, but not too small. Level. Examine closely how the titanium ring was mounted. And it's pretty simple, but if we mess it up, there's not a lot of recovery. So it's not like Elmer's glue, it's like uh, peanut butter. Here they are applying the glue now all the way around the circumference of the carbon fiber cylindrical compression chamber. And there they are applying it to the bottom of the flange now. This is the titanium ring you saw them pull up from the ocean. This is the point of no return right here. He probably had no idea how correct he was. Put the ring down on top of the cylinder here onto the glue. See how they're setting it into place there? be the deepest diving carbon fiber sub ever built. When it goes to 4,000 meters, it'll be the only one out there. I'm gonna be the first guy in the sub, so we will see. Okay, so looking at what we just saw, the only thing I'm a little worried about here is looking at that overlap of materials as the ring comes down onto the cylinder and, and attaches there. That overlapping surface area, how do we know that's enough? It looks like they had it like this. How do we know it shouldn't have been maybe like that? Could it have been a, a bigger ring with a bigger band and deeper connection between the two? We simply don't know. But I do have an uneasy feeling about that connection joint. So by now, most experts are in agreement that probably the carbon fiber cylinder that makes up the compression chamber just imploded. And so we don't even know if it vaporized all of the carbon fiber or maybe there's little pieces of it all over the ocean floor. We simply don't know that. Okay, so my question here is, all right, even after the implosion, why isn't there even the slightest bit of re residue of any of that carbon fiber cylinder, especially where it's connected, where it overlaps and it's glued onto those rings. There's not a single piece, not even just a little bit that might've been left over from the glue, which you think there would have been something maybe. It's as if the entire thing was just picked clean, which makes me wonder, did these just pop off of the cylinder instead? So we can see by looking at the skids here that the overwhelming theme of this salvage operation was that anything metal survived and anything made out of carbon fiber is nowhere to be found, not even a trace, not even a residue. In terms of the current state of the investigation, the Transportation Safety Board of Canada is handling this and they issued this press release on June 28th. Here you can see they're saying they've finished collecting relevant documents and completed the preliminary interviews with those aboard the support vessel Polar Prince. 
And But look right here what they've said here, too. The investigation team has taken possession of the vessel's voyage data recorder, which has been sent to the TSB Engineering Laboratory in Ottawa for further analysis. That's sort of like the NTSB here in the United States when we have an, an airline crash. They send all the parts and the, the, the cockpit recorder and, and flight recorders and everything over to them to be analyzed. And what do you expect when they use rusted scaffolding as the ballast weights? Now, the insider had interviewed Rob McCallum, who was a former advisor to Ocean Gate, and he had some heated email exchanges between him and Stockton Rush. But this is the interesting part right here that caught my eye. So it says here, the report that I got immediately after the event, long before they were overdue, was that the sub was approaching 3,500 meters. And then right after that, he said the submersible had dropped weights which meant the dive was aborted and then lost communication with its mothership. So by this time, they were probably managing that emergency that James Cameron was talking about. Now, now as you know, it's the submersible community is a small community, and these guys all know each other. They were all likely in communication with somebody that was on that surface support ship. That's how they got this information so quickly, even before the press. Knowing that they were approaching 3,500 meters as the depth, this scale view that I'm showing you right here is about how far it was. So it's about as good as I could get it. And remember, Titanic is at 3,800 meters, just 300 meters away. And even though they can't see this, because it would be in complete darkness, you wouldn't be able to see the Titanic unless you were right up against it right here with your lights turned on. But this just kind of shows you how close they were and the vantage point that you know they were probably coming in at, because they did say it was found a few hundred yards off the bow of the Titanic shipwreck. So based on the height and everything, this is as close as they got. And this is what's such a shame about it, folks, because these folks were this far away from the Titanic when it imploded on them. That's, that's what makes this really sad. So it's not like, okay, I died, but at least I got to see the Titanic first. They were likely just fighting for their life when they were, had maybe 15, 20 minutes left to go in travel time to get down to that ocean floor. This is really focused on one thing, and that's the pressure vessel and making sure that that, that component, which is clearly the most critical component of the sub, uh, is uh, safe. This makes me claustrophobic because they bolt you in. And look, I don't even think they were using a torque wrench either to close that thing. I don't know if they're supposed to or not. Well, can you just imagine surfacing like this in an emergency and you make it to the top, but you can't get out of your submarine there. And what if they can't find you right away? So now you're going to die of suffocation when your oxygen runs out simply because they don't know where you are and you have no way of getting out. <sighs> this was a total lack of thinking on this design. Now, some of you may have heard this report. Mr. Beast the other day sent out a tweet. Okay, so right here, Jimmy said here on his tweet, I was invited earlier this month to ride the Titanic submarine. I said no. Kind of scary that I could have been on it. Here's the, the text he got from his friend that says, Also, I'm going to the Titanic in a submarine late this month. The team would be stoked to have you along. It seems to me like he was invited by his friend. And if I had to guess who the friend would be, I think it's probably Jake over here from D Almighty. He's got like 15 million subscribers. And he actually went on the tour in May, but his was canceled because of fog. So he might have been dead. This right here is the exhibition that I think Mr. Beast would have ended up on. Now, if you've been living in a cave all your life, Mr. Beast is probably the largest personal uh, content creator channel on YouTube. And they've got 164 million subscribers. All of his videos typically get, as you see down here, well north of 100 million views per video. I wish mine did that well. In fact, I see Jimmy every September when I go to the Vid Summit conference, which he's part owner of. It's been assumed that Stockton Rush has been after a lot of the YouTube influencers trying to get them to do big time stories that will get millions of views. Now, ironically, a few weeks ago, Jimmy releases this video here. It says a dollar versus a $1 million yacht. So he's comparing all these different boats in value all the way up. And as you can see, somebody already went online and spoofed his thumbnail. Now, let's take a look at how an implosion would affect the cylindrical shape of the Titan submarine here. This is a video put up by Mr. Gedge's Geography Channel several years ago. And he's demonstrating here how to show the implosion. So what they do is they boil some water at the bottom of this barrel. They let it turn into gas and it expands and it becomes steam. And then they cap off the barrel. And once they're done with that, they wash it down with cold water and ice and you'll see it implode. So here he is trying to hose off the barrel to initiate the implosion. Stand your ground. Okay, now 
here I am slowing it down for you by 10x the speed. And look, it still looks instantaneous, even at one tenth the speed. So that's pretty scary, man, how fast that was, wasn't it? And they probably didn't feel a thing. Now remember, that's metal. Metal just goes boom. But you know, with the carbon fiber hull there, it probably just blew up into a thousand pieces or more, and it probably just shredded them like being on a blender, unfortunately for them. But the good news is they didn't feel anything. In fact, it's so fast that your brain and your nervous system doesn't even have time to register the fact that there's any kind of pain or anything. It's just boom. Before they even knew it, it was done. However, we know that they were aware there was a problem. And my guess is for like 15 or 20 minutes, they must have been really panicking and suffering. And for Stockton Rush to be this close to the Titanic and drop ballast and give up and go right back up to the top, something must have been really wrong. And you can bet by that point, things were creaking really bad on that cylinder. We're still working on another video here on the Titan submarine that we should have up in another day or two. We think what we have is a transcript of the entire text messaging going back and forth between the submarine down below and the Polar Prince surface vessel up on the top on the ocean. And it details everything that went on during this entire crisis that they were managing. And it shows everything that they were saying to each other. But we're still trying to confirm it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and be ready and watching for it when it comes. All right, thanks so much for joining us tonight, folks. And we'll see you on the next one.